So Godzilla Minus One was one of the craziest movies I've ever seen, but there's so many questions regarding like its regeneration and its power, like how strong it is next to other Godzillas. So today, Goji Center shall be answering our questions in their epic Goji Center fashion. Leave a like, subscribe to them below, and let's get into it. All right. Dude, this movie's still in theaters. They extended it even more. There's in more chances. This episode, one of the newest incarnations of Godzilla will enter the analysis platform. Oh, which will man. Which bear all of its abilities, size, strengths, and weaknesses studied in great detail. Weaknesses? This isn't any Godzilla. This is minus one. Oh. Ladies and gents meet one of the most destructive and temperamental Godzillas of all time. Subscribe if it's you want so to not beautiful. miss any more episodes covering your favorite kaiju coming up godzilla minus one explain oh i'm excited this episode you got me on the edge of my seat our sponsor nah just kidding it's watcher of realms you got me <laughs> Go support Goji Center. The link is down below to their video because, like, everyone who uses this game, they're gonna get more money from it. And then they use that money to make better videos. In the end, we all benefit. Like communism. Get back to minus one. Woo! This episode will begin by discussing this creature's physical form throughout the film, followed by a section that will discuss its battle methodology, and ending with an analysis of this animal's bizarre biology, and most importantly, one of the most devastating atomic rays in Godzilla history. Special this segment. Creature was first seen right at the beginning of the film on Odo Island, but not as we saw it in the promotional material, but rather as a smaller individual. It okay, I'll just side note. Who thinks Kaiju Universe needs to add the baby version of Godzilla Minus One? I need it somewhere in my life. Can you imagine? Material, but rather as a smaller individual. It is said to be around 15 meters or close to 50 feet in height. Still relatively huge compared to humans. Yeah, 50 feet still film, a pretty big fella. It be a lot taller than this depending on the posture. In this sequence, Godzilla was in a pre-irradiated form, meaning that he still had not harnessed full atomic power yet. Mm. Even without this power, Godzilla was still a force to be reckoned with. Initially not extremely hostile towards humans, but this once so attacked, cool. it's like a TV. Godzilla would then proceed to make use of his sharp teeth, powerful jaws, and appendages such as his legs and tail to easily dispatch numerous humans. How did you get One this thing footage? to note about this island form was the fact that it walked with a much more hunched posture, close to if not resembling the posture of a theropod. This posture allowed this pre-irradiated Godzilla to reach down and pick up small humans. It was Additionally, basically this posture a dinosaur. would allow him to move around faster, using its tail as a counterweight for aiding in balancing and steering. After Godzilla laid waste to the mechanics crew on Odo Island, only Tachibana and the main character Shikishima remained. Shortly before this massacre, Shikishima had the opportunity to shoot at Godzilla's head at point-blank range with a 20 millimeter mounted on his aircraft. Craft. Frozen in shock, he was not able to fire on this monster. That Would footage. this have saved the lives of these men? Maybe, for the time being, but we'd like to think that Godzilla would have survived this. Someone told me the producer said Godzilla only didn't eat him in the airplane right there because he didn't shoot at him, which is cool. Like, he's sentient. Also, does that mean he could grow forever if we kept nuking him? That's what I really need to find out today. You'll see why in a little bit. The attack on Odo Island was covered up by the Japanese government and blamed on American island hopping forces as to try to keep Godzilla a secret. These characters would not see this animal again in this current form, but would see him again as a much, much larger animal. Why? Well, during a time lapse in the film, it just so happens that this Godzilla got caught up with a fission-based nuclear test near toy. the Bikini Atoll Islands in 1946, otherwise known as Operation Crossroads. This caused a few interesting changes in Godzilla, the first being the obvious, its gargantuan size compared to how he was back in 1945. Note that in the span of two years, Godzilla would rapidly increase in height and weight and also atomic power. That's right, Godzilla would now become a walking atomic weapon. See, I feel like he also might develop more attacks for if we keep nuking him against another atomic weapon every time. I say we just keep going for it. The height of this new Godzilla, as it later appeared in 1947, would be a little bit over 50 meters. Another notable difference of this animal like is one -third its posture. Now size. this guy is walking upright. 
But why would this guy's posture change all of a sudden? Well, differences in posture can be due to many things, Whoa. such as the stress on the skeletal formation due to a much heavier body. Walking awkwardly upright might have been this Godzilla's way to cope with this much weight. Now oh, yeah, that on does its wider make sense. feet, but much more on the tail for support, distributing this weight on three points of contact with the ground instead of just two. Similar to how some teenagers begin to walk awkwardly due to fast growth spurts and changes to their periphery that happened during high school. I feel cold Something out. Something more or less similar happened with Godzilla. Our scaly friend here just needed a bit more time to get used to this new large body. But this Godzilla is more than just a large walking force of nature. Up next, we'll discuss Damn. how this animal destroys stuff. The larger, much more robust form of this Godzilla, still after two years of rapid growth and evolution, showed signs of remaining true to some rapid of its growth. more agile He's still attacks growing, dude. when it was the second smaller. Movie with a one bigger of the most one. notable melee weapons of this Godzilla was its tail. With most of the centrifugal energy provided by the hips and prehensile to some degree, this weapon showed to be most devastating when swung. Centrifugal energy. You could just be making up words right now, and I'd have no idea. I need to educate myself more. Literally cutting through buildings like a hot knife through butter. Because it was so much heavier and larger, each one of its steps would butter. inflict much more damage than its smaller form. It was estimated that this fellow weighed around 20,000 tons. Damn. Each of its footsteps would lift segments of the surrounding ground infrastructure, cracking the ground underneath, and killing dozens of people with a single step. There are a lot of people we who were died. able to witness Godzilla use his claws and upper body to bring down large structures, confirming that this guy could be a brawler if need be. Ooh. There were no other large kaiju in this film to further test this animal's melee abilities, but there were other forms of pushback, such as ranged weaponry. A bit prior to Godzilla's landfall during the ocean sequences, we witnessed Godzilla use his other two sets of weapons against the heavy cruiser Takao, inflicting considerable damage. Its armor was composed this of thick was bony so scales that amazing. acted more or less like heavy chainmail. You know? At point-blank range, however, these could penetrate and cause damage. But it wasn't enough to kill this animal. Why? As it turns out, the absorption of the fission-based bomb during Operation Crossroads had some other crazy side effects. Instant regeneration. So fast, in fact, that it is one of the fastest cases of regeneration seen in any Godzilla. See, this is why I maintain you can beat almost any Godzilla. A lot of people say I'm crazy for that, but this dude regenerates like freaking Deadpool. Hey, other Godzillas are just gonna beat him down to a little pile of nothing, and then I feel like he's just gonna regenerate. A good like, example instantly. of this was how this creature was able to regenerate once one of the mines blew up in its mouth. That mine did do a lot of damage, though. Weaknesses, the unprotected areas inside its mouth. That's right, any explosion with the ability of releasing powerful pressure waves in this area would be enough to damage and potentially kill this Godzilla. This explosion would have to be extremely potent, much more than a mine. Immediately after we see Godzilla's what if one of those tank shots in the mouth could have done some damage to functioning form. Same occurred after the Takao landed a good amount of hits to Godzilla's upper torso. This regenerative power proves to be quite handy bringing Godzilla back to the fight in a matter of moments. How did you do that this witchcraft? This regenerative property can be attributed to the altered or mutated genetics of this Godzilla. Once absorbing all the radiation of this fission bomb, Godzilla's biology adopted characteristics similar to those of salamanders. What? Such as the axolotls who can regenerate practically every organ in their entire body. Arms, legs, what? and tail? Easy. That's but insane. But once you're able to regenerate organs such as the heart, lungs, and even parts of your spinal cord and brain, things begin to get frighteningly serious. Dude, all Seattle's just became so much immoral, more gangster. They can die, but the point is that these can survive a larger number of Ugh. traumatic injuries than your typical vertebrate. Ew. Same with this Godzilla. After surviving an explosion inside the mouth, it would only take a creative mind to kill this thing. It's okay, here's a riddle. If you cut Godzilla minus one and a half, would both sides grow a Godzilla? Hmm, that's interesting. Especially after witnessing this animal's primary weapon. No Godzilla analysis is complete without mentioning an atomic charge weapon. It just so happens that this fella displays one of the most devastating forms of atomic breaths ever seen. He does. Formally referred to as the heat ray in the film, this animal is seen to supercharge this weapon by lighting up its dorsal plates from the tail leading up to the head. This frightening display becomes more terrifying as these plates seem to push outwards, as a sort of signifier that this particular plate is fully charged, ready for its full power to be released. 
Once all of these have been fully charged, these will then proceed to sink into the creature's body, providing a powerful flux of energy expelled from this creature's mouth. This doesn't end here. This Godzilla's atomic heat ray will fall on its predetermined target, condensing into a ball of energy forming a literal atomic blast. It's this so pushes beautiful. This mushroom cloud so tall that it can be seen from hundreds of miles away. But the devastation has still just begun. Dude, I felt so bad for Japan at this point in the video. I was like, oh my God, like we just, we just, America just nuked them and then Godzilla shoots nukes now? I legitimately was like, man, they can't catch a break. The shockwave of this blast is able to level down the surrounding infrastructures. Close to 30,000 people perished in Ginza, most of which perished due to the atomic blast. That's insane. Japan after the war was at a state of zero. This is where Godzilla put Japan at minus one. This death toll would possibly be pushed even higher due to what happens after a nuke explodes you in a given them area. Into debt. Fallout. What is this stuff? After a nuclear explosion, the mushroom cloud carries radioactive particles into the atmosphere. This returns to ground in the form of dust or as tar-colored rain. If Gnarly. exposed long enough, this could cause radioactive contamination, potentially killing anyone who does not wash this stuff away soon. Food and water instantly become inadequate for use and consumption, causing the local surviving population to not only be showered with this stuff, but leaving them with nothing to eat or wash themselves with. What is this as footage? bad as this sounds, the truth is that this attack could have been a lot worse. Given that a single well-charged blast of this Godzilla can produce an entire nuclear explosion, what could a few do? Yeah, can this dude, Godzilla what if just fire multiple it? heat rays? The answer would be a frightening yes. In the final act of the film, we do find out that Godzilla can shoot multiple heat rays, but these do take some time to recharge. This time period is relatively short. If permitted to shoot, say five blasts, the aftermath would have been something similar to a nuclear winter in this area. Good God. This, along with these blasts, would have the potential to kill hundreds of thousands, potentially millions of civilians. Like and that's the thing people forget a lot. Don't we only get like 11 to 15 nukes? Like there's like a certain amount the earth could handle before the entire planet is just toast. Like just nuclear fallout for everybody. Kill hundreds of thousands, potentially millions of civilians. Jesus. And an animal like this must be stopped. Which is why Kenji Noda, ex-naval engineer, devised a plan to kill Godzilla. Okay, but here's another thought. My buddy said the producer, somebody stated that Godzilla frequently visited that island from the beginning and they would just like feed it fish or something and it would just go away. So I was thinking if when he was headed to Japan, what if they just gave him a giant fish sacrifice? And everybody was all chill. He noticed no one was running in danger and he just ate the food and went away. I don't know. I feel like there's a chance that could have worked out. How would this work? Let's find out. It could have. <laughs> Killing this animal using conventional methods seem to be problematic to say the least. This animal survived blasts to the face, inside its mouth, straight to the chest, and capable of regenerating in record time. Not to mention pissing it off. So in response, the next best thing was to use a method that would inflict damaging pressure from all directions at one time. This was a in beautiful this case, plan. Mr. Noda resorted to using the ocean as a weapon. That's like the most Let random plan I've ever heard in my life, it but it was no good. It is no secret by now that being deep in the ocean without appropriate <laughs> equipment or craft can result in immediate death. <laughs> the, come on, man. Look, it's a little soon to be using this as a diagram example. <laughs> Death. An animal like Godzilla is used to living in deeper waters and as a result is used to these immense pressures. So why doesn't this kill him? There's a trick to this. In order to safely thrive in these high pressures, Godzilla would need to descend slowly, allowing his body to adjust to these high pressures. But Noda's plan here was to make Whoa, him sink peace frame. Using Freon gas to make the water around Godzilla less dense, making him sink rapidly. Too fast for this body to adapt, making him get crushed from the surrounding pressure. Did this work? No. Apparently, this Godzilla is resistant to sudden pressure changes. However, his body did, did feel work the effects a little, of the sudden yeah. pressure change since we saw his dorsal plates shut down once reaching the depth of 1,500 meters. But remember, this animal's bizarre regeneration ability might have been another reason why he didn't die. That's what I so, figured. what now? Well, Noda had a plan B. If this doesn't work, bringing Godzilla up really fast might have also done the trick. After being surrounded by high pressures, coming up to lower pressures too fast could also be lethal, it causing bubbles work. to form and blocking the bloodstream, causing severe complications. 
After activating inflatables, Godzilla was brought almost up to the surface. And with a bit of help from additional naval craft, Godzilla was brought back up. That but additional scene was so amazing, yet. but kind of silly. Fortunately, <laughs> Shikishima had a plane loaded with explosives much more powerful than the mine used previously. Flying this plane directly into the kaiju's mouth, blowing up its head. This act not only seemingly Whoa. killed Godzilla, but also Jesus. saved the rest of the fleet from being incinerated by an atomic heat ray. So, did Godzilla die here? That Godzilla was so film, pissed off. At we find out that a portion of Godzilla's corpse still contained living matter, which allowed it to regenerate once again. Additionally, a survivor of the attack of Ginza, who happened to be Shikishima's partner, was seen to have a strange formation growing along the side of her neck. Yeah, what was up with that? Similar in color to the black rain seen earlier. Uh -oh. Meaning that this radioactive fallout seen here may have an organic element to it, what? possibly the culprit behind this woman's fast recovery. Huh. Since her face seemed to be a little bit too clean after being exposed to a plethora of flying objects and debris. Those smaller injuries seem to have healed a bit too fast. What do you think comes next after this? Not gonna lie, I thought that was just like slightly lazy writing or just an oversight, but if that'd be cooler if that was what happened. Will Minus One come back for revenge? Or will his revenge take form in a more biological aspect? Ooh. Also, I am 100% buying these shirts. I tried to buy them yesterday and my browser was being funky, but look how beautiful these shirts are, dude. They're gorgeous. This video was very deep and philosophical though. I hope to God there's a sequel. That movie's setting so many records for like Japanese films and domestic uh, box offices. I don't know. It's doing great. So there might be a second. But yeah, leave a like on the video, subscribe, subscribe to Goji Center as well. And I'll see you next time.